Hi, I'm Charles Arthur, Technology Editor at The Guardian, and I'm doing a hands-on review in more detail of the iPhone 5, which was released last week and which will be shipping to people later this week. So if we compare the old iPhone 4S, which is this one here, with the newer iPhone 5, you can see that the iPhone 5 has got a larger screen. It's got room for six rows of icons rather than the five of the old 4S. And the, uh, the other detail obviously is that the screen is longer, but it's not wider. The two phones would fit over each other exactly, but it is significantly thinner. Another key difference is that when you're moving icons on the screen or when you're actually doing typing, it feels as though you're actually touching the pixels. There's a real difference in how thick the screen feels compared to the 4S. Apple says that it changed the production process so there's one less layer of glass in the touchscreen, and that's certainly noticeable. Apple released its iCloud service last year at about the same time that it launched its iPhone 4S. And the difference with the iCloud service is that it backs up all your phone's data. So now, if you buy an iPhone 5, you'll be able to take all the data that was backed up on your old phone and signing in with the new account, you can put it all onto the new phone. One of the things that Apple says about the new screen, and which definitely does come through, is that the color saturation is greater. There's more highlights in the color. The color in the, uh, the picture on the iPhone 5, I think, has more depth to it. There's more saturation in the greens. There's more colors in the blue in the sky, as well as the whites in the clouds. And the plowed earth shows up more browns. One of the interesting new features that Apple is introducing with the iPhone 5, and which will be available on the 4S, is the panorama camera function, which takes a 28 megapixel photo as you move the camera around. Now, features like this have been available through apps and on uh, things like the Samsung's Galaxy range, but the difference here is that rather than having to stay in one place and take a series of photos which are then stitched together, you can be moving, you can move the camera around, you can move it up and down, you can move it around an object, you can create a photo which is unlike anything you've ever seen. I think it's going to be a big hit. Here's the panorama function on the camera, which when you press it, gives you a line in the center which you need to follow, and it's gyroscope maintained so that as you move, it takes the picture. So you can create a photo any way you like. So that's a bizarre panorama of my hand. There are lots of new features in the phone software as well. For example, when someone rings you, you get the chance to accept the call, reject the call outright, or you can send them a text message which you can choose the wording of. And that's quite a useful function, I found, um, especially because you might want to reply to someone, but simply dumping them off to voicemail isn't always that friendly. So here I am making a call from the phone on the left here to the phone that I had to call that iPhone while I was testing it. This shows that I'm calling it, but I get the option, if I drag this up, to send different messages. I can reply with a message, or I can do a remind me later. If I reply with message, I can say, I'll call you later, I'm on my way, wake up, what's up, or a custom message. And you can do that even after the person has rung off. So if you get a phone call and you can't answer it, then rather than just rejecting it and throwing someone off to voicemail, you're now able to send them one of a number of messages or even a custom message that you make up on the spot, which I think is gonna make a big difference in how people respond to phone calls and how much more useful they're able to be in explaining why they didn't answer. So maps are the big change in the new iOS 6 software that runs on the iPhone 5. You can see here that it's found our location. We're here in the Guardian at 90 York Way in uh, London and you can zoom in on it to get more detail. You can zoom out. You can also go for a 3D option, which gives you a, a bit of an angle there. You can move it around, which is something you've been able to do on Android for a long time. You can also tilt it up and down. And this gives you a 3D view of what you're looking at. And you can add to that as well. You don't just have the standard and the hybrid, you also can have a satellite view. So as you wait for the data to load up on that, you can take us back to the Guardian again. The satellite data loads up, you can zoom in on it, turn it around. If you ever got lost as to where your north was, there's a little compass button up in the top of the screen. Some people had worried that Apple was going to be losing out by not having Google involved in the maps. But on the evidence of this, I'd say it's doing pretty well. 
you can see that on the new iPhone, there's a different connector at the bottom. And also, in fact, that the headphone socket has moved down to the bottom now as well. The uh, old 30-pin connector that was on the old iPhones is now redundant. It's been replaced by this little 9-pin connector. One key difference about the 9-pin connector is that it works either way round, so you don't have to worry about getting the plug-in the wrong way. The loss of the 30-pin connector, well, that's um, upset some companies, but um, from what I hear, accessory makers are all piling into the 9-pin devices. They're making as many of them as they can in the expectation that most people are going to be wanting the new ones rather than the old ones. One of the interesting new features of the iPhone 5, which is also part of the iOS 6 software, so will be available on the iPhone 3GS, 4 and 4S, as well as the iPads, is called Passbook. It's a way of collecting those sort of uh, tickets that you get, which have uh, the 2D barcodes on, it collects them all into one place. So here we have one, for example, which is for Delta Airlines, which is uh, going to be sensitive for your location as well, so that you can see that here it says show on the, the lock screen of the phone so you don't have to unlock your phone when you, uh, when you use it. And also it's location sensitive so that when you get into the airport it will know that it should be coming up on the, the front of your phone. This is quite an interesting move by Apple. A lot of people had thought that it was going to be introducing a technology called NFC, Near Field Communications, in the iPhone 5. And it didn't do that at all. Instead it's gone with Passbook which seems to be a way of getting into uh, commerce and uh, transactions without actually having to put any extra chipsets in. Now the big change I think that's come with the iPhone 5 and the iOS 6 software is Siri. Last year when Siri was included in the iPhone 4S a lot of people thought it was very underwhelming and certainly in the UK it wasn't that much use if you wanted to do anything involving maps navigation or indeed finding things. It was fine if you wanted to make voice calls, if you wanted to play music on your iPod or iPhone, or if you wanted to send text messages without having to unlock your phone. But beyond that it wasn't so great. Now Siri is really a remarkable device. So here's an example with the football scores. How did Tottenham Hotspur do last weekend? Tottenham Hotspur beat Reading by a score of 3-1 to one last Sunday. Siri can also be used to find restaurants. Find Thai restaurants near here. I found 15 Thai restaurants fairly close to you. And that's a pretty impressive list of Thai restaurants close to the Guardian. I didn't know any of them existed before. A lot of people have felt that on paper the iPhone 5 isn't a very strong sell. They've felt it's lacked a wow factor. But I've got to say that it's once you start using it and once you start holding it in your hand, you start realizing that a smartphone isn't just a list of specifications on paper. A smartphone's a bundle. It's got specifications, which is things like how fast does the CPU run. It's got features like what things can you do with a camera. And it's got things like services, which is what does iCloud do in terms of backing up everything on your phone so you can transfer it easily? What does Siri do so that the voice-driven assistant is actually helpful to you so you don't have to take the phone out of your pocket even to send a text message or find a restaurant or get navigation? And what sort of apps does it have? What sort of music can you get? What sort of things can you do with the phone? A list of specifications doesn't really tell you that. It's only when you start using the iPhone 5 that you start realizing what Apple has really built with this.